Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Creative Talk. We have a special guest, a very wonderful, wonderful personality. I'm a fan of this person, of this um, being. <laughs> She's very exciting, uh, dynamic. She produces wonderful content. And yes, I'm just blown away. Very humble, very, very kind, very beautiful. Um, she's a travel YouTuber, guys. A travel YouTuber. She's rich because she can travel. <laughs> a business owner, a content creator. Let's all welcome Miss Kimberly Dolly. Welcome to the Creative Talk. Oh, thank you. That was such a great introduction. I love that. <laughs> Amazing. I raised the bar. I raised the bar. And and I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Um <clears throat> Before the before we start the recording, I was you know having a chat with you, and I'm really amazed. You are so young, you are so yeah. young, and you have accomplished, and you're doing a lot more. I believe. I'm just you know I'm just excited, and I can't contain myself. But this show is for you, Kimberly. So feel free to tell us the story. How how did you came in this position in doing what you do? Um, being a travel YouTuber at such a young age, who influenced you or what influenced you? Okay, so this is kind of like a rare story, actually. Um, and my life has changed so much the past year, if so. Um, I'll say it all started back in 2012 when I started to edit my own like cringe YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I started doing that and then eventually as time went by I got more and more experience within the editing world I guess and then now in 2020 you know with the corona situation and everything I was like wow okay hmm what can I do because during the lockdown I only worked like two times a week I believe, or in the first weeks, I had no work at all because I worked at a restaurant actually, like a nine to five job. And wow, wait, yeah. you have a nine to five job and you can still do all those wonderful things. Yeah. Wow. So, and I've been working in that job for like, it started off as a part time job, like, while studying because I went to high school of course and all that stuff um but yeah back in November actually 2019 I went to the Philippines as I told you before um and you can also see that on my YouTube channel but anyways um I was actually supposed to um join the army in August of 2019 wow <laughs> yeah so okay. I went to me for 26 hours <laughs> and then when you get to the army they will do like a complete health check on you like yeah. physical mentally and all that stuff mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I got there I passed all the tests and then at the end of that session um, I got to the health health tests and yeah. then they get like my whole health journal up on the screen like with all my x-rays mris all that stuff like all my injuries from my soccer career <laughs> so they were like okay you're not joining the army right now because your injury <laughs> is not helping you in this situation so right they sent right. me home after 26 hours which was devastating <laughs> because i had no plans for that year because mm -hmm. in Norway, like you're you're gonna join the army for one year if you're qualified. So I didn't apply for any schools. I didn't apply for another job. I didn't do anything of that as I was like determined that I was gonna join the army for that year. So when they sent me home after 26 hours, I was like, what do I do now? You know? <laughs> okay. So I was like, okay, great. I got home and after only 30 minutes of being home, I booked a spontaneous flight ticket to the Philippines. And the following four days, I went. Why and Philippines I stayed, though? Sorry, why Philippines though? 
I mean, I don't know. I have family there actually because my mom is from the Philippines. Oh, okay. So you're half Filipino. Uh, no, it's complicated. I'm like only one eighth. Oh, All, one right. eighth you know? All right. Well, let's not get yeah. any talking about that here. <laughs> anyway, so so uh, you have to you know to, to summarize that you have connections in the Philippines. That's why yeah. you decided to go there, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because because since I had like school before and I had this restaurant job, like I wasn't able to visit the Philippines because I felt like that going to the Philippines for only one week was a waste of money. Yeah. I felt like I had to be there for at least a month, you know? Mm. So once I joined the army, I officially quit my job. So I was yeah. like, okay, you know what? Now I actually have, I have no like excuses now. I can <laughs> actually go. So I stayed in the Philippines for two months. Right. From August, like mid-August to mid-October. Where, yeah. where exactly in the Philippines? In Cebu City. Oh, nice. Very nice. Yeah, I love, I love that place, Cebu. Yeah. Yeah, or it's a little island, Lapu-Lapu City. But yeah, basically Cebu. Um, yeah, and when I went to the Philippines, I actually met up with um, this guy called Calvin. And he was a freelance photographer and videographer at the time. And he still is, I believe. Um, and when I went there, I went there as a travel YouTuber. So I was, I was like, okay, for once, I actually want to enjoy my trip. So why not just get someone to help me film my trip? So I got in contact with Calvin. And then also we got in contact with a guy from the US he spontaneously went to the Philippines as well. And we all met up in the Philippines. Oof. Yeah, like he contacted me on Instagram and it all just wow. started like that. And then before even, like I've been meeting up with Calvin a few times before meeting mm -hmm. up with this guy named Josh from the US. But we all planned a trip to Shargao before even meeting up with Josh. Wow. So, yeah, we were like just chatting, and then we were like, okay, you know what, let's go. And that was, I think that's an eight-hour trip for Calvin and I. So we went eight hours to meet up with this random guy that we haven't met before from the U.S. <laughs> like, what, I don't know, like, he could be a serial killer or something we yeah no idea. i mean these things happen in the movies you know people get abducted people get you know they disappear because of this <laughs> yeah, but like he was my age so i was like okay fine i'm gonna trust this i'm gonna believe in my instincts and just go for it right so right we went to Targo for this weekend and it was so much fun like we connected we all became best friends and josh and i we are best friends today so it's like yeah it was all worth it and then that's when I kind of started believing that everything happens for a reason you know so I was like okay yeah I was devastated after the military situation the right. army situation but then I was like I completely changed my mindset everything happens for a reason and I was yeah. meant to go to the Philippines that time mm -hmm. so later on during that Philippines trip um, Calvin realized that I did video as well. Like I could edit my own videos mm -hmm. and I had some experience on that field. Right. So he invited me to join some of his shoots for his other clients. And during those shoots, I kind of gained even more experience and learned a lot, like how he handled his clients, how he like directed everything and basically how he acted during the whole situation. Yeah. So that's when I was like, oh, you know what? Why don't I go into freelancing? Why don't I go into do all that stuff? Ah, and okay. And then? Oh, kind of, yeah. It, all, it was all meant to be, you know? And then in November, Josh and I, after, like after we both, like he went back to the US, I went back to Norway. Because I live in Norway, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So then we started planning a huge trip to the US. Like we wanted to do um, 48 states in 60 days. We wanted Ooh. to do a huge road trip. 
because since he lives there, he has a car and like he has all those connections. We try to do it all in a budget. So we have like uh, 20 pages of planning saved in the documents. Ooh. And nice. this, was, yeah, this was supposed to happen um, from June to August this year, but then Corona, you know? Yeah. And then I was like, oh, okay, great. Um, Because since November, both Josh and I were like, okay, 2020 is going to be our year. We were determined that, okay, 2020 is going to be our year, whatever happens. But then Corona came and he was (laughs) like, oh, shit, like, what do I do? Like, this is so bad. We were so excited for the trip, blah, blah, blah. 2020 was going to be our year. And Mm -hmm. I was like, Josh, chill. 2020 (laughs) is still our year. Yeah. And then anything can happen. Mm. As long as you have the right mindset and surround yourself with the right people, everything can happen. Like anything can happen. I like that. I like that. Mm. So he was like really devastated about this whole situation. I was like, okay, you know what? Still (laughs) my year. I'm not gonna think about it in a negative way. Corona, like there's, there can be something positive during all this. So in the beginning of Corona, this was like end of March ish. I started doing research on how to start a online business. So now here, here we get the, the chunky meaty part. Okay. I'm excited for this one. Okay. (laughs) Cause this is going to take a while. Sure. 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 Feel free and you know, be relaxed. Imagine that we are in a coffee shop (laughs) having a chat. (laughs) Oh, I love coffee shops. (laughs) All right. right. So the story. Hmm. Yeah, so this is when, like, it starts getting interesting, mm. as if it was interesting before. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited. So, I'm excited. Yeah, I started to invest in all those, you know, uh, online courses on how to start your own business. Some of them were like kind of like a scam because you got into it, you did all this course, you did all that stuff, but then they kind of just left you on that. You just got your money and then left you alone, you know? There's a so, lot of, of, there's a lot of like that uh, online. Yeah, so that <laughs> happened probably three or four times. And then, <laughs> How much? How much did you spend with, with those scams? Wow. Those scams alone? I guess... Um, $1,500 or something oh. in total of like online courses. Yeah, but, but I understand, you know, you wouldn't know, right? Until you're there. Yeah. Okay, and then okay. I was like, I'm going to just gain all the experience I can get mm. from all those. And then yeah. we'll see what happens. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I did all that. And then I was still like, okay, 2020 is still going to be my year. So something needs to happen doing all this, like I meant to do this. I'm not gonna quit even though there's scams and all that stuff. So I kept going and then one day, like we have those Norwegian influencers here that has been to, have you heard about Love Island? Yeah, I do, I did. So we have like Love Island Norway edition. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, and then, so they, um, had the recording of that show in March ish, I believe, or I think that was actually January, February, March, something like that. And then, so they just finished that show. And then my neighbor and a close friend, she followed one of those influencers on Instagram. And then one of those influencers posted a story um, asking their followers if they knew anyone who could edit. YouTube videos for them. Ooh, okay, okay. So that's after me like doing all those courses and gaining experience in more editing and more like filming and all that stuff within the media business, right? Mm-hmm. And how to generally create an online business for yourself. Mm-hmm. And then so I kind of felt like I can yeah, I had confidence in what I did at the time. So my friend sent that Instagram story to me via dm so i could see the story as well and she was like why don't you just apply like there's nothing to lose right so i was like okay sure i could just say hi and then (laughs) right right and then 
so I did that, and then she, she got back to me straight away, actually, the influencer. Wow, okay. And then I introduced myself, and then she really liked my personality and all that stuff. And then I sent her some links to my previous work. I sent a link to my YouTube channel right. and to some other work I've done for other people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then she was like, wow, I really like your style of editing. I really like the, like the whole package. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, nice. So I thought I was going to have like a job interview kind of style, you know? <laughs> but like, yeah, okay, here's my number. Call me tomorrow. Whoa. Yeah, this all happened the same day. So I was like, okay, um, yeah, okay. okay, maybe then we will have the job interview tomorrow. And then that's like what I put in my mind. But then I was like, okay. <laughs> right, I, I right, right. Like, yeah, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah, we can do it tomorrow, <laughs> you know? Because I didn't want to like be like a fangirl or anything. Because she's yes, like, yes. You know? Of course, of course. Yeah, I wanted to stay professional. Like I had no idea who she was though. So I was like, <laughs> it was that hard. I love that. I love that. Stay yeah. playing it cool. <laughs> yeah, playing it cool. I had no idea who she was. <laughs> right, right. Okay, okay. So that happened. I called her the next day, right? And then when we were talking, like I imagine a job interview over the phone, but the way she talked to me was like, I don't know, it felt like I already gotten the job, you know? Right, she, right. To be like that and then do it like that, like in this way. Oh, she was giving way. you instructions already, like what to do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as if I already got the job. Okay, okay. So I was like, oh, and then I didn't know how to ask you like, is the job mine or what? Like, I had no idea how to get forward to like that point. Okay. But then, like giving her, like she gave me like her whole calendar. Like, I want to film that video that day. I'm going to this event that day. Are you able to fly down to Oslo and then help me film this? Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, um, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, <laughs> because wow. at this time, at this time, I actually went back to the restaurant job just to have something, um, a little income while doing all my business. Right, right. Um, but yeah, it was kind of strange. And I was like, oh, okay, because I live, um, I used to live at the west coast of Norway. And then I don't know if you know where Oslo is, but it's like yes. more of the east part of Norway. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I started editing some videos for her, like... Uh, remotely or remotely, I mean, from my house in on the west coast. Yeah, yeah. And that's sorry, like I didn't meet her yet at that point. But then later on, um, in the middle of the night, I believe it was about one or two a.m. Wow. She called me on the phone. Okay. And I was like, okay, <laughs> why is she calling me in the middle of the night? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Luckily for her, I was still awake though because I was editing some other videos for myself. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I answered and she was like, hey, um, so my boyfriend, because uh, these influencers, they won Love Island this season. They were the yeah. winners of Love Island. So they were together. They were a couple. They met. Ah, Island. okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then because the boyfriend also wanted to do YouTube and all that stuff. He had like this huge plan of doing this six, uh, six weeks training thing because he's like a fitness guy. Okay, okay. So he had already kind of hired someone else to do that work. It was like filming and editing for him for those six weeks, right? But then uh, the girl called me and said like, hey, um, so we need your help. Ooh, wow, okay. And I was okay. like, okay, sure. What am I getting into now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you're just saying yes, but you know, you don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> I'm just saying yes to everything. <laughs> so, okay, and then what happened? Basically, the guy that um, the boyfriend hired ditched him. Ooh. And it was kind of like a scam because he was like acting really professional, saying right. he had all the experience and all that equipment and like he had the editing software and everything. Mm. But it turned out that he didn't have his own camera. He, he had like a pirate version of this editing software. So his whole computer crashed. And because his whole, like, it was like an eight year old computer crashing, like he couldn't continue 
working for this influencer. Right, so right. So we reach him and say like, hey, I can't continue with this project. Mm. And this influencer had like all these plans in mind and like wanted it to be like such a great thing because he already promoted it on Instagram and all that stuff. So he was getting his following hyped up. So we didn't want to disappoint them, right? Right, right. So this is when I came in to... <laughs> to save the day. <laughs> yeah, to save the day. They're like, can you please help us? Like, we need your wow. help. We studied that, blah, blah, blah. And we really need your help right now. Are you right. willing to help us? Okay. And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Don't worry. I'm, I'm going to save your day. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't be disappointed. I'm going to be here and fix this. Mm. No problem right so that's when i went from one client to two clients Ooh, yeah so now i had both of them as my clients mm -hmm. i started working and editing for both of them and then after that like kind of editing remotely from the west coast right they eventually needed me to fly down to oslo and help them film the rest of his six week series Ooh, wow so I went down to Oslo for a weekend-ish to help them film and everything, right? And then that's when they told me like, hey, um, since we love how we do, like your work and your personality and you as, you know, as a person, we would really recommend you to work for this other guy if you're interested in doing that as well. Oh. And, <laughs> and, not a regular guy. This was CEO of a big company. Oof. And they needed help with some videos and editing as well and filming. Wow. So I was like, hmm, okay. Let's get into numbers here. Because I was thinking, what if I flew down and yeah. up and yeah. down and up? And then I had to like look for hotels and all that stuff. Yeah. That, that was actually my question in mind. So before that talk... Um, you helping out with the, the boyfriend and, you know, the, the first influencer, your first client. Yeah. Would you, are you the one who paid for, you know, all the other expenses? Okay. So the first thing was that I was already going to Oslo for a weekend. So I told them, ah. hey, I'm in, in Oslo that weekend. Let me know if you need any help. Yeah. So smart, that's how I started them. Mm -hmm. But then when this third person came into the picture. Okay. Um, he was like really excited and wanted me to actually do this kind of full time, you know. So wow. he offered me amount of number, like amount of money yeah. that he would give me every month if I wanted to say yes to this project. So I was like, oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, that sounds interesting. And that was before <laughs> I even met, the, met up with him. Mm. So while I was in Oslo already for that weekend with my friend and then also helping influencers, we kind of arranged a meeting with that third person, the CEO. And then I was like so nervous because I've never been to like a professional meeting before, you know, I'm just and, 21 years old. <laughs> and there you go again, meeting up, you know, with someone you don't, you don't have a clue about. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. Like, I'm always meeting up with people I never met before. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm I'm so yeah. excited. I, I'm I'm fascinated. It's like I'm listening to uh you know a fictional movie. Yeah, it's right? such a wonderful story, Kimberly. Like, okay, okay. I, I'm gonna shut up now and just listen. <laughs> okay, so this is the funny part of this story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like, I was like, okay, I'm going to meet up with the CEO of a huge company. I need to, like, dress professional. Ah, and I come on. Act professional, right? So right. I put on some of my nicest clothes. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, okay. it wasn't that formal, though. It was like a, a Levi's jeans right. and, like, a Gucci belt or something. Some. Wow, okay. You know, I'm a really right, fancy okay. person, so I was yeah. like trying to act cool and chill, but at the same time kind of dressed up in a low-key way, if that mm. makes sense. All right, all right. Okay, so, okay. Nice. But he like he, he invited me and my friend to get to his place, which was like a 
a top apartment in this huge building and he drives a Porsche and it's like, yeah, like I kind of got intimidated, like what's it called? Intimidated? Intimidated, no, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. So I was like, okay, I gotta act professional here. So he had this presentation, right? And he like he already planned that before. And he was like, yeah, I'm gonna give this presentation and then we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that. So I kind of build up the expectation, expectation, expectations. Is that the word? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's still not my first language. <laughs> oh, come on. We're in the same boat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. And then. Okay. And then when I knocked on the door or the ring bell <laughs> and he opened this door and he was walking out greeting me with like training like workout shorts and this singlets <laughs> what okay really casual really chill okay i was like all right great now i feel more relaxed <laughs> and then and then they said oh okay um i just woke up let's go grab some coffee first before starting this meeting wow so cool <laughs> Yeah, we went down the apartment, like the elevator. We went over the street, got his coffee, got back to his apartment, and then ate and just chatted for a little while. And then we started getting into the meeting, right? Right, right. It was so chill, so casual, sitting there in his sh- shorts and mm. singlet. <laughs> as if he just, I don't know, went for a workout or something. Yeah. But he just woke up. <laughs> right. But then... After that, like, okay, great. The meeting was informative. It was all going like in the right direction. And then we started getting into numbers and all that mm-hmm, stuff. Mm-hmm. And he like offered me to do uh, all those stuff, you know? Yeah. And then he asked me, are you willing to do this? Because this is going to be like a monthly job. Yeah. Kind of a long term job, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, we don't have a contract or anything, but it's a right. long term. Yeah. yeah. Thing. Right. So, um, yeah. Imagine flying down to Oslo every month to film two videos <laughs> and edit them. I was like, hmm, how's that going to work? But right. when he got into the numbers, I was like, well, that kind of will cover my rent. Right? So... <laughs> I thought, hmm, why don't I just quit my job on the West Coast? Oh, yeah, okay, okay. That's, the, the, that's where the risk part is. Yeah, but while like, doing all that stuff, getting into my media business, um, I also did another business at the side, as a side hustle. So right now, I actually have two businesses running. Okay. So I was doing all that. Meanwhile, going back and forth to Oslo, trying to figure out, like basically get my shit together. <laughs> <laughs> and then, hmm, yeah, so this is the online coaching business. Right, yeah, right, right. One part yeah. of my life and then the media business is my other part of my life. So I was just getting into both of those, you know. And then... I thought, hmm, okay, this is such a risky thing to do, you know. Quitting my, I don't know, it wasn't like a good salary job because, you know, working at a restaurant is like a minimum. Right, way. right. But but Which, at the moment, that was the, the source of your income, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, thought, I think I only got like... Um, Probably one thousand eight hundred dollars. Okay. Month. Yeah. Okay. So, and that was me like working a lot. Like it could be like, ten hours one day, <sighs> eight wow. hours, ten right. hours. Right. Yeah. And they gave me like the boss at that restaurant gave me so much responsibility in that job because he kind of um, he injured his shoulder so he didn't work and then the other guy had the vacation at the time so the whole business was basically on me. Yeah, because I yeah. Would, I've been working here for like five years. So wow. Yeah, so he was like, okay, since you have 
the most experience of all the new people getting into this restaurant. <laughs> And they give you all the <laughs> rest of so I kind of ran the whole restaurant for like right, a month. Right, right. Okay. But I, get, I didn't get any bonuses. I, get, I did not get a salary raise. So I felt stuck and like unhappy in that job. You know, me. And there was no growth, right? There was no growth. You. Yeah. There's Your passion like, is not there, right? Yeah. Mm. Like... Sure, I felt like that was a job I mastered. I knew what to mm. do. I could do like everything in there because it's not only a restaurant. It was like a tourist attraction. Wow. So they had like uh, motel rooms and then cabins and then everything. So wow. I was basically the receptionist. I was the cashier. <laughs> I was the waitress. I was everything. Wow. You know? That's funny, right? When, when, uh, when a tourist came in your place, you will greet them. And then when they go to the part, the part where they will eat, you will be there also. <laughs> yeah, really, I was everywhere. Wow. And okay. sometimes I was the kitchen helping them and I was doing the dishes. I was everywhere. Wow. So I felt okay. like I did so much work for a little money, if that makes sense. I didn't feel like um, I got enough for the amount of work I was doing. So that's when I actually started into all this business stuff. And then I was thinking, okay, so pass forward again to the situation in Oslo. And I was trying to make the decision of moving or not. Right. So I was like, hmm, okay, 2020 is still going to be my year. So if I don't take this decision, like this, if I don't choose to do this, then I might not live up to the saying I've been saying yeah. the whole time. You know? <laughs> when it's my year. So I said to the CEO that, okay, if you give me this job, but he was like talking to me as I already got the job again. Of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Some people do that to me. Like, I just want to <laughs> job it to you, but they kind of give me the job already before. It's funny, right? Uh, most of the people... Uh, they they want the job interview, um, but then on your side, the job is already yours and you're asking for an interview. <laughs> it's the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> like what? <laughs> okay. But then, yeah, I said to him that if you give me this job, I will move to Oslo and do this full time. And he was like, great. You can start next month. <laughs> wow. Or it was like, kind of like two weeks later, but yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. So once, like, as soon as I finished that meeting with that guy, I messaged my boss at the West Coast at the restaurant saying, hey, um, I'm just giving you this notice that I might quit this job. And man, he got so disappointed. Ah, uh, yeah. Because I feel like, because... This restaurant, this um, tourist attraction business thing, it was a family thing. Right. But his kids didn't want to like take do part this with thing. the business, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I felt like he, yeah, the boss and I, we, we came, we became really good friends. Like he was his stepdad of my best friend. It was like all a community, you know? And I think that he was planning on having me to take over the whole thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's like the vibe I got from him when I told him because he, he got so disappointed because he liked me as a person and he wanted me to stay there for a longer period of time. But my passion is not at a freaking restaurant. My yeah. passion is more. <laughs> I want to like be my own boss and do what I love. Exactly. I always wanted that. Like, I never wanted a typical nine to five job. I never wanted mm. to, like, climb the corporate ladder. You know, I always because you're an artist. You're 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 an artist at heart and in yeah. mind. So that's why I guess I'm just born yeah. like that. So I gave him this notice, and then one month later, or actually two weeks later, I w I was done at that job because. Um, he promised me to give me this, um, I guess, this vacation, two, three weeks yeah. vacation-ish, as I've been working the whole summer. 
and then taking over the whole fucking restaurant, right? <laughs> Sorry, language. That's fine. That's fine. As natural as you could be. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. and then. <laughs> <laughs> um. And then during those last official two weeks, because you're supposed to have like this um, one month notice before officially quitting oh, the yeah, job. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I had those first two weeks where I had to work. And then the two next weeks I had my vacation. So I kind of technically or practically finished after two weeks. Right. <laughs> so during my vacation, I went back to Oslo and started helping those influencers and started like mm. getting in more filming project mm. stuff for all those three clients. And then I started moving. I actually moved to Oslo um, the 17th of August. Okay. Yeah. So that all happened. So then I was like, okay, great. And then I registered both my uh, businesses in Norway. So it's official now. Wow. Two time business owner, like officially. On the yeah. Campus. So great. Then I came here. This is my room in Oslo in this co living. Mm -hmm. This is like this camera stuff. This is my office. This is my studio. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> so this all happened right and then meanwhile doing all that I built up my other business the online coaching business and the funny part is that one of my business partners actually mo moved here as well in the same building wow <laughs> okay yeah so we had never met before we only chatted on like messenger instagram during the, like about the business and all that stuff. Right. Mm. And then one day she was like, oh, okay, I wanna move to Oslo too. Like, do you know of anything? And I was like, um, hey, there's still available rooms in the place I'm moving to. Yeah. And then the same day she sent a message to like the landlord or whatever here. And then the next day, like the following day, she had like a house tour on video. <laughs> And then she moved in even before I moved in. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So the first time we ever met was actually in this house. Mm -hmm. But it felt like we've been friends forever, you know, because wow. of the business. Yeah. Wow. Everything, everything connected, right? And yeah. it, it's funny, like you were saying to your friend in the US that, you know, even though bad things happen, like the COVID. Mm -hmm things there there always will be positive things you know you, you just need to have this right mindset have this right perspective that everything's going to be okay and it's up to you right how you will manage and listening to your story man like wow risk taker mm -hmm. uh, a, a positive person and no wonder you're you're getting you know very successful in what you do running what two business three businesses projects on the side coaching creating content wow so that's a good combination um i know that you know there's a lot of challenges that you've encountered so i will ask you that later but in 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 your business in the in the way that you run things um what do you think are the key elements to make a business successful in your context? Wow, okay. Um, so the first main thing is to, as I mentioned before, have the right mindset. And then the second most important thing is to surround yourself with the right people. If Oof. you surround yourself with those who have the success you want, then you will get there as well. If you surround yourself with people who lives in a typical nine to five life, right? If you take advice from them, then you won't get anywhere because they don't believe in what an entrepreneur believes in. They have a different they mindset, different, right? Yeah, different mindsets, different values. Mm. They don't believe and to become successful, you have to believe. Oof. Like even though like, there's hard time 
you feel like your life is falling apart, if you just believe that everything's going to be okay, then the next week, everything's okay. I love that. You just yeah. need to believe. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, yeah, I think that's my main secret, actually. Just believe. And to get you in that right mindset, I would recommend like listening to podcasts. For example, this one. <laughs> Very smoothly done. <laughs> 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 okay okay no podcast that can give you mm. inspiration and motivation to keep going um another one would be like uh payday with ray ray have you heard about her yes uh, yes yes that one's really good for entrepreneurs doing online business like that um because yeah you get so much value in just a few minutes you know so either that and then really take care of yourself um like do meditation, go work out, uh, stay active, read a book, take some time for yourself to just let everything sink in, slow down. You don't have to rush through anything. Like right. you have a long life and mm. the more effort and time you put into something, the better the outcome will be. Oh, I love that, Kimberly. But that's... That's a powerhouse, like combination after combination. Ooh, actually, I, I was about to ask, okay, um, that's actually a tip for, for, for our listeners and our viewers, but what can you say? I'm going to give you a situation. Let's say a person comes to you, talk to you, a fan or a supporter or you know, just someone, not even a client, came to you and say, Kimberly, you know, I lost my job. Uh, but I believe that I can do something. What can I do? What are the basic steps that I can do for me to start my new career, maybe business or something else? What would you say to that person? Wow, okay, that's a hard one. Um, (laughs) I mean, I'm an online business coach, so I would automatically be like, oh, okay, why don't you like look into what I'm doing. See if that's something for you. Mm. Maybe I can help you. And since I have two businesses, I actually helped people before doing something like this. Right, right. As I have two businesses, which is quite different, I'll be like, okay, what are your skills? There you go, yeah. What do you like to do? Mm. And if I say something um, going toward like the media side Mm -hmm, of mm -hmm, my life, mm -hmm. I would give them like advice on freelancing. I would give them advice on that stuff. And then if I generally like their, for example, editing style, I would be like, hey, why don't you just try out for me? Like, wow, editing some videos for me. Like if I like your style, maybe you can be one of my future editors. Wow. So I'm trying. You know what, Kimberly? You know what? Because of that, I'm sure when we air this episode, a lot of videographers, artists, designers are going to be messaging you. Hey, we want to work with you. <laughs> yes, come to me. Because <laughs> I'm actually, actually building a team right now for my media business. Wow. Oh, yeah, wow, that's example, nice. That's nice. I have like headquarters in every continent. Almost. Mm-hmm. Not like right. Antarctic or something, mm-hmm. but like almost every continent. Asia, Europe. Europe, um, the US, I'm going to have like headquarters Wow. where I'm going to have like um, employees around surrounding those headquarters. And then my plan is to have like freelancers in my team so I can like, f- like fly them over to different Oof. countries, help them like, because I know, for example, Calvin in the Philippines, my camera dude down there, one of his uh, passions is traveling and doing freelancing so i was like hey you like you don't even have a choice you are going to be a part of my team if you want it or not (laughs) because he's really talented like he's really talented so i said to him you join my team and i will fly you from country to country doing what you love creating content for other businesses and companies and brands and like that's a win-win for him because he liked wow. both creating content and traveling. And traveling. Wow. And 
all that for free while getting paid. It's a dream job, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, that's something I would love to have. Like, if someone offered me that, and I would say, yes, I'm in. Yeah, it, it, it's so, I, I love the concept because when you were explaining what you offer to Calvin or to anybody else in, in you know, building a team, the the person that I see in that story, in that, you know, while you were talking is actually you. Because you were that you were in that situation back then. And then, you know, you, you people came into your life, those influencers who give you a break, the CEO guy. And in return, now that you are in the top of the game, you know, getting higher, starting a lot of businesses, like what you said, different um, parts of the world, you are also giving back, helping people. And and one of those is Calvin, right? Um, yeah. and, and, and other employees um, working with you. And that's what, in my perspective, as a business, business owner also, um, a, a digital intra- entrepreneur, that is something what the world needs. You know, it's not just about money. It's not just about uh, being the boss or running a business. Yeah. It's more than that. And I love what you said, that you get to do what you love to do, your, your passion. In, in Calvin's case is traveling you know, videos, mm-hmm. art, and at the same time, you're earning. It's it's something for your future. And I love yeah. that because you, you have that mindset and that is what the world needs. People like you, businesses like what you have, helping people, inspiring people. Wow, thank you for that. Nice. Yeah, for me, it's more about the money. Like, I don't care about the money, actually. I'm more about helping people and make this world a better place basically. yeah so the money part is just a bonus for me it's like oh randomly check my bank account oh okay i got paid today another pay <laughs> that's the bonus you know right. it's more about you have the right mindset and you focus on something like the positivity and stuff <sighs> and you just want to help people then you will get rewarded in the end anyways because that's how the world works exactly if you help people, you do everything right, and you just want to be a good person, then you will get rewarded in the end. Oh, I love that. Thank you so much for that inspiring story. Kimberly, I am blown away. I'm inspired. Uh, my respect for you just went high and high and oh. high above, above my house. <laughs> it's just, you know, I, I have a soft spot for, for entrepreneurs that, cares for people for their passion and hearing your story you know i i will say this again this is what the world needs you know people that really cares that would change what we have you know not drastically but people more people like you like what you've said we can change the world right now yeah now kimberly we have uh come into this part of this episode that we will play a game, okay? So this game has nothing to do with the topic, your expertise, yep. nothing, okay? All right. So th- this game is called the Creative Fast Talk. How it works is that I will be asking you random questions and then you would answer them fast. You know, um, you don't need to spend much time time in thinking what to answer but first thing that pops into your mind you spit it out okay all right That's so it. random this is so random that i i didn't even read the questions it was just given me a while ago by my team <laughs> so how cool is that all right okay okay let's do this wait 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 okay question number one dun, dun, dun. what is always in your bag Uh, no, no, notebook notebook okay i'm gonna follow up that question what was always in your bag when you were a kid i don't know i, I never used the bag <laughs> <laughs> okay okay fair enough next, next if you were, yeah if you were an animal if you were an animal what animal would you be and why um, oh, 
Ah, uh, this is so hard. Uh, <laughs> I want to be a dog because a dog. that's a human. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a specific breed of dog in mind? Uh, you know the small, cute ones. Pom- oh, yeah, like a chihuahua Pom- or like. No, what are they call the Pomeran- Pomeranian. Pomeranian. Yeah. Yeah. That's so that's small. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Kimberly the Pomeranian, if she's an animal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. What are you scared of? Um, um, oh my God, these are so hard. <laughs> like people would probably say like failing, but I'm not scared of failing because that's how you learn. So I don't know, pass. Next question. Okay, okay, okay. What is your favorite food? Butter chicken or spring rolls, Filipino spring rolls. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yummy. You made me hungry, Kimberly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what What was the weirdest food you have tried? Um, 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 snails. Like, uh. not like under, like, not like the one that you have in France, but in Norway, we went to this random beach and we ate snails. I don't know. It was weird. Either wow. that or some like dried squid from the Philippines. Dried squid? Oh yeah. There's a lot of that in Cebu. I love that. Yeah, it's good, but like yeah. if you think about it, it's kind of weird. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next. Netflix or YouTube? YouTube. Easy. Yeah, because we're running the business there, right? Okay. Yeah. Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. Easy. Instagram or TikTok? Instagram. Easy. Still. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Coffee or tea? Coffee. All right. Okay. Now, here's where the questions get weirder, okay? Soap or toothbrush? Toothbrush. Briefs or boxer shorts? <laughs> boxer shorts okay sunrise or sunset oh they're equally as good though yeah ah uh, sunsets okay the city or tuck away in a forest the city easy okay okay popcorn and film night or dinner and dancing under the stars? Popcorn and film nights. Who, um, if you have a power to bring back someone back from the dead, who would it be and why? Okay, I have two persons. Okay, one of them is like Kobe Bryant because he is really inspirational. He was really inspirational. Mm. Or like Albert Einstein, because I want to know how he was thinking during the time. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. That's nice, that's nice. Okay, last question, okay? Mm-hmm. What would you want the people to remember you of? Me? Yes. What uh, would you like the people to remember who Kimberly is? I want to be the person that has always inspired others to do more of what they love. And the one that always help people and they like don't care about the money side of things. I love that. I love that. Thank you, Kimberly. Uh, Wow. This episode, I really enjoyed. I was inspired. Um, I really love your story. You're a wonderful human being. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your experiences, your perspective, your spirit. Thank you. Feel free to promote your social media accounts, any projects, any promotions, anything that you want to promote. Feel free. The floor is yours. Okay. Thank you. First of all, I just want to say thanks for having me. It was such an amazing podcast to be a part of. And yeah, I've also been listening to some of the other episodes and they're great. I love them. Um, hmm. I would promote my Instagram just at Kimberly Dalla. You can probably put it somewhere. 
I guess you do it on YouTube and everything, yeah. Um, and probably my YouTube channel, Kim's Passion. And also, if you go to www.kimberlydale.com, <laughs> you can actually uh, watch a free web class Ooh. by two of my business partners about my online coaching business and what we do. So if you're interested in starting your own online business, then go there and you can have me as your personal 24 seven mentor. And then we will become best friends because that's yeah. how I work. <laughs> friends for life. Right, right. Guys, if you need assistance in running your business, starting a business, feel free to contact Kimberly. She's an awesome human being. And who wouldn't, you know, why would you not spend 24 seven with this awesome human being? <laughs> Brains, beauties, humor. She got it all. See, that's, that's promotion now, Kimberly. You need to pay me. I'm promoting now. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Kimberly. It was such an honor to have you in the show. Guys, feel free to check us. We have our YouTube channel, the Creative Talk Podcast. You can find us. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere, anywhere. We have an Instagram account, Facebook. You do the math. Okay, guys, thank you. Kimberly, thank you so much. Continue to be a blessing to people and stay safe.